Okay, I just want to briefly, briefly capture this. So this, these little, uh, there, are, there are a bunch of washers inside of the little plastic kit that comes with it. But the ones you're looking for are the little orange ones. And that orange part peels off and then there are four different washer spots, uh, four different holes you have to pour it. So it's on the top, right there and there, and then uh, one at the bottom and one right there. Okay, uh, th these washers already come installed. And with all four washers installed, now it's time to peel back this layer here. Okay, and you'll notice it's got a nice, uh, this video doesn't necessarily capture it, but uh, got a nice kind of nice luster to it. Let me see if I can capture that for you. But yeah, it's really pretty. Um, I may run some uh, some alcohol over it. I'm also going to run alcohol over the, the portions that go over the BRMs here, uh, just to clean those off. Um, you can take off the leak uh, the QC tested um, stickers. I'm going to leave them on this one because it doesn't look like any of them are visible. The other one that I had for uh, the Monarch um, RAM module kit that I've installed in my other system. Uh, did have those in places I didn't necessarily like, so I went ahead and removed those. I may remove this one. Uh, but anyway, um, so I've got the goop primed. I removed just a tad bit of it, and then we're simply going to take this bad boy, flip it over, and then lower it onto the different holes. And then carefully, what I'll have to do is flip the motherboard over while holding this in place and install the screws. Um, that part is a little tricky. Uh, the lowering part obviously isn't too difficult itself. Okay, so one thing that the manual fails to mention is that uh, there are additional screws that are located on the back of the board that are for the bottom, uh, the bottom of this actual piece here, the the heat sink, not the heat sink, but the um, the um, uh, the input output panel cover. So I'm hoping that it still fits over the monoblock itself because I'll tell you right now this is one of the big one of the nicer things about the board is that it lights up uh, it should but I'll post results here in a second but it is not stated in the manual that you will you will have to remove those uh, it looks like it's just two screws towards the bottom on the back of the motherboard uh, little tiny screws that are up there of course um, but anyway now it'll be a little bit easier to lower it so you just really just want to align all the holes up uh, all the different holes up there um, and then uh, carefully flip the motherboard over. So I'll go ahead and do, I'll mount it onto this thing and then I'll flip it over and get some more footage for you there. Okay, continuing on. So yeah, no, it, it, you, you do have to remove the panel and the screws, but it does actually fit back on over the, board, over the actual monoblock itself. So that should give you a kind of a, a pretty decent, let me get just a little bit more light there. Um, a little bit, kind of a nice layout. That's a, um, a Corsair MP500 NVMe. Uh, that's only 120, I think it's like 128 gigabytes if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's almost full actually. But anyway, uh, it is actually, uh, the, the, the monoblock is installed. It hasn't been mounted yet. It's simply been placed down, aligned with the different holes, and then the, um, the, um, the, the, the portion that covers the CPU behind the jet here has been placed down and firmly pressed down onto the CPU itself. I usually give it a few rotations here and there just to make sure that some of the bubbles get out. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the Aorus um, input-output panel does still stay on the board. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. It does take up a lot of real estate, like I said, but it still leaves you plenty of room for RAM, uh, your GPU, your PCI card down there. Um, um, so there's definitely plenty of space, but it'll look really, really cool. Uh, this will light up. There's a few lights that are underneath here. Um, even some of the uh, some of the the PCI ports light up. The RAM blocks or the RAM um, dim slots actually light up too. This right here actually lights up too as well. So it's a pretty board when it's all up, and you'll definitely see some footage of that. And then you can also hook up the four-pin connector too. Um, the RGB um, uh, connection section on the motherboard itself, which I don't really know is located. Uh, but anyway, I at least wanted to show you the what it looks like on the board, and then I'll get it screwed on and mounted, and then we'll get you some final wrap-up footage here in just a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that pretty much uh, is it. I have installed 
the mono block uh, onto the actual board itself. Um, there is a little RGB cable that connects this Aorus um, heat sink, uh, the uh, um, input output panel cover to the board. It's a little bit easier to unhook it before you actually flip it over um, <laughs> to, to mount the, the block onto the motherboard itself. What I would suggest doing is that you, whenever you actually get out of the lines, uh, the, the actual holes lined up on this side, take this thing off, uh, take the panel off and disconnect the wire, and then flip the board over and hold the, um, the, the, uh, the block to the motherboard itself. Um, it's actually a very weighty um, block itself too. So, uh, yeah, and then you simply take the, the, um, the, the gasket and then the mounting plate and put it onto the back there. Make sure that the little lumps are pointed outwards, of course. Now, there are two different kinds of screws. Um, there are the ones that are a little bit longer are the ones that you would actually use to mount into the, uh, the, the, um, the mounting bracket itself. No washers are required for those. Now, you would need to use the little plastic washers that are not adhesive on the screws um, on these, these little ports here, wherever the uh, MOSFET cooling modules were, or the heat sinks uh, were. And then uh, the, the kit also does come with some extra screws. I dropped one of the washers down and lost it, but uh, there were extra screws. One extra screw, one extra washer for each kind, so that's always really nice. Uh, that's EK for you. And then I also reinstalled the screws. Not only the, the manual only tells you to remove this one, but you do actually have to remove the three, uh, two of them that are down there to get this packet moved. And I'm pretty sure I read that right, but uh, just make sure you get that thing removed there, and uh, make sure that you secure it tightly enough to where it's not too tight, but just so it doesn't budge. And I'll get you one more kind of nice little front viewpoint. But look at that thing; it's pretty. It's pretty. I've always really liked the board itself, and man, I tell you, that thing looks great. Um, and that is going to look great with some coolant to install it too. So, anyway, that's pretty much everything. My biggest gripe about the motherboard itself: um, the motherboard runs great, um, and so does this, this model block will look really great, and also will run just fine. Is that I realize that there's only one RGB. Uh, connector on the motherboard here, which is a little disappointing because I also have like a case um, RGB connector. I think I'll have to buy like an adapter or something, but um, I won't be able to use the RGB fusion with both until I get some sort of a splitter. But aside from that, no, very easy to do. Um, you know, this can be a little bit daunting to some people who are new to it. Um, I don't know, like I said in the previous video, the unboxing video, if you've installed computers into your systems previously. It's really no big deal. Uh, I would say the most challenging part of it is uh, getting over that fear of, of putting it on, of course, and then really just the, the portion, you know, the part where you have to hold this steady and then kind of um, flip the, the, hold it steady and then flip the board over. Just make sure you hold it together, flip it over, put one of the screws in real quick with the Allen wrench and then secure another one and you're pretty much good to go from there and uh, um, it'll, it'll actually mount pretty good. Uh, it's on there very sturdily, for, uh, very sturdily. Uh, won't really, it won't budge or anything like that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll install everything back into my computer. I'll have to do some more, I'll have to cut some more PETG, uh, PETG tubing. I'm, I'm doing hardline tubing in this build. I actually had a, a hardline tubing um, um, kit installed already which you saw in the opening part of this video. Um, but I'm also going to be, I'm going to have to redesign the layout because um, it looks like the layout of these two bad boys is a little bit different, if I'm not mistaken, uh, apart from the Evo. But yeah, looks great on here. Like I said, it takes up the space that the heat sinks used to. Um, so you'll definitely want to set those aside and keep those in case you decide to revert back. Um, but who would want to, right? I mean, because this thing looks great. I really like that this will also light up too. So what I'm going to do is I'll build both machines, get them both looped and, and cooled. Uh, and get some coolant and solve them, and then take pictures, videos, I'll show you everything, it'll look great. One's a red one, uh, the other one of course is Wrath, uh, which is um, uploaded onto my website. You'll see pictures, I've also got a Vega Frontier Edition installed in that bad boy. Um, so it's a very high-end machine. This one is um, going to be uh, another high-end machine for me too. Probably have the Frontier Edition put into this box, uh, it'll be more of my product productivity machine, and then the Ryzen 1700X build that I have will be my gaming monster. So 
Um, and of course, we'll water cool both the GPUs whenever the Frontier Edition and the Vega uh, loops come, become available. And I will, of course, be using EK's equipment. But anyway, um, that's pretty much everything. I do appreciate you checking out the video. I know this is probably a long one. Uh, you know, it's probably a little bit clunky too here and there. But you know, again, just follow the instruction manual. It's really, really easy to do. Follow this along just to kind of get the idea of the layout of the board uh, and what to expect as far as parts go. If you haven't done so already, uh, subscribe to the video, uh, subscribe to my channel, like the video. If you have questions, comments, go ahead and put those down below. Also, be sure, I can't stress it enough, check out the website, modscience.net. I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com, modscience. Um, pictures, videos, high-end equipment, I'll probably get into, you know, just articles and all that kind of stuff. But it's just my blog, my hobby blog. Uh, that I've designed um, just to just for the hell of it. Um, this all started, I think I may have stated in previous videos, is like a $200 upgrade uh, to Ryzen because I was really excited about it. Again, I have a lot of shares of, of AMD uh, owned. And I wanted to kind of understand the product better, so I bought um, the Ryzen 1700X. It started as just a CPU and motherboard upgrade and has blossomed into two uh, fully functional workstations. I even bought like a curved 34 inch monitor. Yeah, it's com costed an arm and a leg, but hey, you know what? I have the money, so I'm fine. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed everything. Again, make sure you like and subscribe, and I do appreciate it. Thanks.